dependency injection, dependency inversion, constructor injection, parameter injection. What does it all mean? Why do we need them? And uh, how do we actually use them? Constructor injection, I find, is one of these things where when you first understand it, you think it's absolutely trivial because you're like, well, I've been, I've been inject injecting values or references through my constructors since like day one. So how is this anything but trivial? But when you then really understand constructor injection, i.e. dependency injection through the constructor, you realize that it's massively powerful. You realize that it's not at all the same thing as just casually passing, passing values through the constructor. There's much more nuance to it than that. So let's first get the concept straight. Dependency inversion is the all-encompassing principle. It's, it state that, states that you should invert the dependencies. So you invert the relationship in a way that might seem unnatural. Dependency injection is the specific act of inverting the dependency. Constructor injection is when you're performing dependency injection through the constructor of an object. And parameter injection is when you're performing dependency injection through the parameter of any function of uh, an object. So stated in the most simple sense I can think of, instead of considering the formal de definition, I would think of it this way. Dependency injection is about never coupling to a concretion, but always coupling to an abstraction, right? Obviously that's an oversimplification because at some point you have to create a concretion, but we'll, we'll return to that in the end. So the point of performing dependency injection uh, is that you want to be able to change your instances of classes at runtime and not only at compile time, which essentially means that you can, you can change behavior of, of your program at runtime and not only at compile time. And which also means that even at compile time, you can change the behavior of your program without rewriting classes, but instead by writing new classes and then injecting those members instead of rewriting the old ones. So dependency inversion increases the flexibility of our code. It increases reuse, right? It encourages small classes with uh, limited responsibilities and uh, it makes it easy to exchange one instance for another instance in order to change particular behaviors. That's one of the aspects. The second aspect is testability. Without dependency inversion, testability or, or unit testing, isolated unit testing would be really tricky. Because when you want to test in isolation, you want to test a class without integrating with other classes. So in that case, instead of allowing your class to integrate with other classes or allowing your object to interact with, intera uh, um, interact with other object, you inject a mock that you have full control of. So you use dependency injection, which is possible because you have used, because, because you are designing according to dependency inversion uh, and inject a class that, or an object that you have full control over, which means that you can A, test in complete isolation and B, because of that, avoid unwanted things such as random numbers in your tests, for example. Just imagine if your tests would pass 50% of the time but fail 50% of the time. Totally tricky and we want to avoid that. How do we actually do with dependency injection? So I'll only talk about constructor injection because I think when you see how constructor injection works, you'll trivially figure out how parameter uh, injection works. So imagine that you have a class called animal and imagine then that you have a bunch of animals inheriting from that class. So we have cat and we have dog and we have cow, etc. Imagine then that these classes have an instance method called speak and this instance method it doesn't really matter what it does, but let's say it, it, it prints some strings. So the cow says moo and the cat says meow and etc. So naively, we might uh, hard code this behavior of either saying meow or saying moo into the speak method, into the specific classes, i.e. moo would be in the cow class and meow would be in the cat class, etc. This is sort of object orientation 101, right? This is what you learn in class. Of course, in a bigger system, if it's not about saying moo, but it's rather about something very complex. So assume essentially it's a bunch of more code. So then you might think, okay, let's, let me put this, uh, this behavior in another class. 
So perhaps you have a cow speaking behavior dot speak, and you have cat speaking behavior dot speak, and so forth. So we now have two hierarchies. We have uh, animals and we have uh, speaking behaviors. Okay, so this is all fine and dandy, but the problem is that we are potentially breaking dependency inversion. Let me explain. So if the cat instantiates the cat speaking behavior and the dog instantiates this dog speaking behavior and so forth for the cow, then we are breaking the, the dependency inversion principle. Because the high level module, i.e. the cat and the dog and the cow, is coupled to the low level module. In this case, the, the speaking modules. So dependency inversion says actually you should invert these dependencies such that both the uh, uh, high level module and the low level module should both depend on abstractions. The abstractions in this case uh, are uh, the parent classes. So for both of these hierarchies, the parent class for, for the IE animal and the parent class IE speaking behavior. Not the concrete speaking behaviors nor the concrete animals. So the dependency inversion principle in this case essentially states that that animals should not be coupled to concrete types of speaking behavior, but rather to the abstraction. So this means that we want the animal classes to not instantiate their own speaking behaviors, but rather that they somehow should receive a speaking behavior and then run the method speak on that speaking behavior. How they would receive that would be through either constructor injection or through parameter injection. And the point here is thus that the concrete animal class, i.e. cat or etc., then only knows about the most abstract or the abstraction speaking behavior and it doesn't know about concrete speaking behaviors such as the cat speaking behavior and the cow speaking behavior, etc. The most interesting point or the most interesting benefit about this design, I find, is that oftentimes you'll realize that actually you don't need subtypes. Actually, in many cases, dependency injection is enough and you don't need inheritance hierarchies, which is probably why people are saying composition over inheritance right? Because you can compose what behaves as your subtype instead of actually constructing your subtype. In this particular case, assuming animals do nothing else, then cat and dog and cow would all contain the same code. They would just have different names, which makes them completely redundant. So in that case, we only need animal. Thus, this is how we've achieved composition over inheritance because we only have one animal class and we want when we want to construct a cat we can we, then we instantiate a cat speaking behavior and provide it to the animal class and thus the animal instance will behave as a cat and similarly for cow and for dog so if you take dependency injection sort of to its extreme in absurdum then you will realize that you can always inject dependencies instead of instantiating them. Which is, think about this, also why people say that the new keyword is dangerous. You should always be wary when you see the new keyword. Is this really the correct place to couple to a concretion instead of an abstraction? So using dependency injection, you can always defer using the new keyword. You can always defer instantiating upwards, backwards, out of the system, right? Towards the main of your program. And this is actually what happens if you use dependency injection into madness, right? In some sense, you could instantiate all of the players in the main of your system and then have no new keywords in the rest of your system. But of course, there are always trade-offs. And I would actually say that a little bit of dependency injection is better than no dependency injection. A little bit of inversion is better than no inversion, which you'll discover when you, for example, try to test your units in isolation or when you try to re quickly respond to new requirements without constantly having to change all of the code. So that's dependency inversion. Please ask any sort of questions that you might have in the comments and subscribe for more.